So in your experience, how are the repairers navigating these challenges and, and making up for lost time? That's a probably important one. How do they make up for the lost time? Well, they've got to, they've got to bring that money back. So mm. if they're investing that 10 minutes, that 10 minutes is worth a few dollars. Even if you're charging out to a customer as a billable charge, it's worth a couple of bucks. You've got to then go through and fight with each supplier to make sure that you're getting that best price. Whereas really, you could reinvest that time. You're not having to try and chase it up. You're not trying to have to make it back. Yeah. And the really hard thing is price is really important to, to a workshop, but it's not always important to a customer. There's, there's been a lot of research done. Most recent one that I can think of, the AAA did a great report a few years back um, where they found that customers' number one preference, so the reason why they chose a workshop, was the people. They wanted to understand the people, the business, the engagement, the connection. The least selected primary reason was price. Right. And, and so you're reinvesting that time instead of fighting and trying to find the, the best product or trying to, trying to claw that money back. You're, you're investing that time right where it actually makes most sense to your customer. And ultimately, those are the ones that are bringing the money into your business. Yeah. I mean, it's, a lot of people are time poor. And when presented with a solution to a problem that they might have, you know, if money is an issue, they'll normally pay to have it sooner. Mm. And so quite often or not, that is like, can you do the job? Yeah. And, and getting the work underway, if you spend that 10 minutes talking about before, going through for one part number, if you've got to go through and redo that for four or five cars that have come into the day, that's a full hour of mm. time that you're now waiting to get some of those parts in. They're missing the first yeah. run. Can you start all those jobs straight away? Are you going to end up with cars on hoist that are now waiting for parts that mm. don't show up in time? And it, it, it's got a cascading effect on how much, how much you invest right at the start then helps build out or save that time through the rest of the day. In 2022, our end users are aware that, that, that resources are limited across the board, everywhere in the community. And there's no difference in a workshop. You know, one oil filter for a specific car, there might only be one. You've got two of them being serviced. And one has to wait a week for the next oil filter to come through, as an example. That's when customers are making their decisions on price. I need it. Yeah, and it's the exact same for even in, in our stores when we're supplying. We've only got a limited amount of stock to service multiple different workshops. If you're chasing around those parts and you're taking that 10 minutes, you might miss out on the opportunity the part because gone. Yeah. somebody else has already grabbed it for a yeah. customer that they've needed with that exact same part. And again, it just cascades. It needs to come in from another store. It needs to come in from further away, a distribution center, somewhere else. You can still get the part. You can still service the car. But Clock's that, ticking. Yeah. And, and you've just lost how much, how much resource time do you have in a day? The shop's only open for so long. Making sure you've got as much done as quickly as possible at the start just, again, stops it from compounding through the rest of the day. So what's going to happen if the auto repair businesses don't make any changes and things stay the way they do? 